In this tutorial, we'll explore peer assessment in Moodle utilising the Turnitin Peer Mark tool. Peer assessment has a number of phases. It begins with the design phase, where the lecturer establishes the assessment task itself, plus provides a set of review criteria for the students to use. During the submission phase, students prepare their own assignment submissions and submit them in to turn it in for peer assessment. In the peer review phase, students are allocated one or more of their peer assessment tasks for review. They can see their peers work and use the inbuilt criterion as established by the lecturer to provide the student with feedback. During the assessment phase, the lecturer assesses each student's work individually. First, a mark for the submission itself, and optionally, a mark based on the quality of their review of another student. So if we take one student as an example, they receive peer review from one of their contemporaries, a mark from their teacher, and optionally, a mark based upon the quality of the peer review that they gave to one or more other students. So now that we have the fundamentals, let's dive into Moodle and have a look at how we create a peer assessment. So here I am, I'm in the LMS and I've navigated to where within the learning design I'd like to place my uh, peer assessment piece. I click on Add an Activity or Resource and then from the options on the left hand side scroll down until you see turn it in assignment and click add. It will now ask you to establish the assignment criteria as we scroll down I'll draw your attention to some key areas under submission type. In this case we want the students to upload a file so I'm going to specify file upload. I only want them to upload one file so one part's correct there. I can specify the overall grade. I'm happy with 100. And as I scroll lower down I get to specify for instance the due dates of this assessment piece. This will be important later on as we set the peer review cycle. So that's the initial establishment of the assessment task. If I click on save and display, it will now launch us into Turnitin where we get to establish our peer mark settings. So we've now swapped over into Turnitin we can see the assignment details we've previously created and in order to allow for peer assessment we're going to use this peer mark assignments feature. To do that click on the little green icon with the cog symbols. We currently don't have any peer mark assignments established so let's create one. Click on the plus symbol. It's at this point we can give some instructions to students. We also get to decide whether we're going to issue points to the quality of a student's peer review. I will, so I'm going to set that as 10 points. You'll notice that the start date that is chosen is after the due date for the assignment, and that's appropriate. We want our students to have the opportunity to submit their work before the peer review cycle kicks off. So everything's looking good there. I'm going to hit save and continue. This progresses me now to the peer mark questions, which is where we establish the criterion we want our students to do the re review upon. We can write our own questions, or we can choose from a pre-existing library of questions, and they're quite good. So I'm going to show you both techniques. The first thing I'll do is to show you how you can add from an existing library. I can then select the particular questions that I might want to include. Notice that they've got different 
question types, a scale, which is a rating type of uh, criterion, and a free response, which allows for students to, to type in. So once I've selected some questions that I'm happy with, I can hit Add Selected Questions. So there we go, I've got some questions in place now. I want to add a few of my own, so I'm going to Add Question. I can choose whether it's a free response text, in this case it is, and the minimum length in terms of words that I'll allow for that response. I'll add one more question. In this case I want it to be a scale, I want it to be a five point scale, and between the rankings of 0% and 100% and save. So we've done it. We've created an assignment. We've added some peer review criterion to that. And it's now at a time where we can have a look at the student experience to show how they submit work and then provide that peer review. So I've now logged in as a student. I can click on the link here to be taken in to turn it in. I'll see the instructions the teacher has presented for me. And as I scroll down, there's a link here that allows me to submit my paper. At this point, they can give the submission a title. And importantly, they can upload their file as evidence. OK, so our first student has successfully submitted their work. I'm going to submit work on behalf of other students and then roll the clock forward to show you what the review cycle looks like. So some time has now passed, the due date has expired and we're now ready to do the peer review cycle. I'm back in as a student. I'm going to click on the relevant assessment and this will take me again into Turnitin. Now I want to go through the peer mark process from the student's perspective. So to do that, students also click on this little green icon here. That will launch the peer mark review process for them. It says that they have not yet written any reviews, but they can click on this Write Reviews button to start a review. And so at this point, the student sees a split screen. On the left-hand side is a paper for their review, and is on the right-hand side are the criteria that the teacher has established for them to perform that review. And this, I think, is a real power of peer mark because they see the two items side by side and there's inbuilt tools of peer mark that allow them to, for instance, highlight sections simply by dragging over the top of them and adding comments. Now they can use the scales as provided by the teacher to give feedback to their peer. Once a student has completed their review, they can click the Submit button and that review has been returned to their peer and also to their teacher so that they can assess the quality of that review. So for the final time, I'm going to swap hats now. I'm going to return in as the teacher to observe and give my final marks. So I'm back now in Turnitin as a teacher and I have two tasks at hand. The first is to mark my student work and the second is to mark the quality of their peer reviews. I'm going to do both by scrolling the screen down and clicking on the blue pen symbol adjacent to a particular piece of work. This launches into a feature called Grademark that accelerates the grading of student work. 
you see the work on the left hand side and a series of statements that you can select from in the right hand panel. So for instance if you felt that this needed citation you can simply drag it out and place it on the screen. You can also add your own comments simply by highlighting or clicking on a piece of the screen and typing in. In addition to this you can view the originality report. This shows any potential breaches of plagiarism and the source where it might have been copied from. At the end of that review process give your students a final mark simply by clicking in the top right hand corner and typing in their value. So we've done half of the process, we've marked the student submission. Let's now turn our attention to the review, the student reviews of the same work. I can do that by now swapping over to this peer mark toggle. I can see that there are two reviews. One of them is mine, the other is from a student. So I'm going to select the student review. And I want to see the specific comments that the student has made. To do that, I click on the comments button in the lower part of the screen. Here you can see the questions that you asked and the students' responses to those questions. And you can therefore make some determinations about the quality of that review. So what we get to do now is to enter a value in for student 2 based on their quality of the review that they made for student 1. So we've now completed our marking. We've marked student 1's final assessment piece. We've also given a mark for student 2's peer review of that same piece of work. So that's peer review in a nutshell. There's quite a number of moving parts. It does take some careful planning, but the payoffs are considerable. It's a particularly powerful teaching and learning tool and allows the students to be much more involved in the assessment and review process.